So it's the last day of 2020 and I'm reviewing the last tablet of 2020 that a lot of people did ask for. This is the Techlast M40. So this one is powered by the Unisoc. It's an octa-core, it's the T618. It has Mali G52 graphics and the screen on this is IPS. It is 10.1 inches. The resolution is 1920 by 1200. Now this screen is sadly not fully laminated. I didn't know until I got it if it was gonna be fully laminated or not. So that means we have a gap between the digitizer glass on the top of this and then that IPS panel below. And the IPS panel, while the viewing angles are okay and the fact that it's non-laminated, it's quite reflective, the brightness is a true letdown on this one. It's only 189 nits is what I'm measuring. You cannot really use it outdoors and in bright environments. It's fine, it's fine indoors. Outdoors will be impossible with this one. There is a camera up the top, eight megapixels, and here is a sample of it. It's not a wonderful camera at all. Now the audio that you are listening to is from the microphone in this one. So it's just one mic and the audio quality is average so is this video quality it's nothing amazing i'm sure your phone will do a much better job than the cameras that you get here the 8 megapixel ones on the tech class m40 and on the rear we have another 8 megapixel camera as well with pretty much the exact same quality so this backing plate this is alloy here so that's the only part of metal that it does have around it the frame around the outside is all plastic now if i do give it a bit of a flex it does actually flex and there's a little tiny bit of a creak there. So the build quality on this Techlast M40 doesn't seem to be quite as good as the recently reviewed iPlay 30 that I covered in the channel too as well. Now down the bottom of this plastic frame, there are some cutouts for two loudspeakers. These ones are surprisingly loud. The quality of them is average, but it's good that they've really improved in the volume because before when I was reviewing these a couple of years back and even last year's models, they were quite quiet. But here's a sample at 100% volume of those dual downwards facing loudspeakers. And on the left we have a Type-C port. It doesn't support display out or fast charging. It will take about two and a half hours to fully charge this one. And in the box you get a white charging cable which is Type-C to USB and our charger which is 12.5 watts. The buttons on the side here, they're not loose so volume up and down and the power are made out of plastic. And then we have right up the top the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The quality is okay. If you want to use the built-in hardware FM radio, you do actually need to plug in a headset for this one. And for voice calls, it can be used just like a phone. I do recommend using a headset, otherwise it comes through on the loud speakers. So the SIM tray does take two nano SIMs and a micro SD card. I've tested 128 gigabytes with no problems. And all up, the build quality is fine. I, for the price, I think it's all right. It just Really, I do wish it came with a fully laminated display. Now, the gestures are working good. This is the full Android 10 gestures. It can be a little bit choppy at times, but it's a stock ROM here, and I think that is aiding in the performance so things aren't too laggy. It's just sometimes I've noticed the animations here, it could be just a little smoother. It is a 60 hertz panel, and it seems like the UI just at times doesn't seem to always be running at 60 frames per second to match that refresh rate, which of course is very important. Now your recent apps, they show up here fine and swapping over to them is relatively quick. It just can again feel a little bit sluggish in this action here to swap over to say his YouTube, bring that up and then had to reload too. That has been in the background for a little while and scrolling again, doesn't seem quite as smooth as it could be considering we do have six gigabytes of RAM on this model. So when you power it on and you take a look at what is pre-installed on this, no bloatware. So there are a couple of apps here that might own. Okay, GPS test that I installed and Android Bench. Those two are missing. But without that, there really is no bloatware. You can consider maybe drive or keep notes or play movies, something you may not use. But this is very good. So great to see manufacturers are still giving us ROMs that are stock Android because if it's a bloated launcher, stock launcher as well, 
you could get a little bit more slowdown, a little bit more lag. So we're gonna have over 100 gigabytes free space with this, micro SD card support, dual 4G SIM support with this as well. There is also FM radio on board. And there are over there updates that are being pushed through from TechLar. So this one came through recently and that is just a bug fix, so good to see. Now battery life, this is a, a not a particularly good score here. So I would expect at least eight hours, hopefully from a 6,000 milliamp hour battery with uh, not an amazing bright screen that this one has. It's a relatively dull screen and configured to 200 nits of brightness was almost, in fact, was 100% brightness. Uh, not an amazing score, so I'm disappointed with the battery life. It should be a lot better than this. Real world use, you're looking around six to seven hours on this one, whereas the iPlay 30 will be more towards the nine and 10 hour mark. Much better battery life there with uh, that one. Now the internal storage, not good. It's been a while since I have seen an eMMC drive as slow as this one. So this is eMMC 4.5 spec, and we've got a sequential read and write that are very slow, and the random write speeds too, quite slow. So the installation of applications a little bit slow on that end, and it's a bit of a bottleneck of the system. The iPlay 30, which I am comparing to this tablet a lot, that one, because they're very similar tablets, both Android 10, both OptiCores, both in the same kind of category, does much better with about three times faster internal storage. But this does have a much better benchmark score. If you love your synthetic benchmarks, and 2.2 version 8 here is telling us that it's about almost 50,000 points faster than the iPlay 30, but that is synthetic benchmarks. Real world use, they feel very, very similar, and at times I would say pretty much the same. So the scores are one thing, but real world use, definitely another, of course. So wide vine level three cert here, we don't have level one. Okay, and I expected this, these budget tablets will not have the cert that we need. So this means Amazon Prime Video is in standard definition, so is Netflix, and if you're into Disney Plus, it won't even work because Disney Plus wants to have a Wide Vine Level 1 cert before it will. So sadly, if you're buying this tablet for your kids and the other Chinese tablets, they're not going to work with Disney Plus without that cert. GPS, this is actually working okay. It's not too bad. Uh, there are a few satellites it picks up onto, and it can get an accuracy of one meter, as you can see here. I would rate it marginally better, the GPS performance, compared to the iPlay 30 and the wireless. So the wireless, a little slower than the iPlay 30. We do have a maximum speeds that I managed to get very close to the router, almost sitting on it, uh, 160 megabits per second, almost, okay? And then the point I always test downstairs, 130, which is not too bad. I'm happy if it gets over 100 at that point. So at range, it still manages to get decent download speeds, but it's certainly not the fastest. Flagship tablets and phones can get around 800 megabits per second. So you can see there's a big difference in those wireless speeds there. Oh, <laughs> that was me with just Call of Duty. I managed to get a win there. And YouTube playback. So the maximum option is available to us, which is 1080p, 60 frames per second. And it looks fine. It keeps up and streams ahead no problems with this tablet. That is on wireless or on data. I've had no issues with this. But because the screen is so reflective, you can see too as well here that they're blacks. So they just don't look as dark as they should be with this. And if I just go back here in the timeline, you will see that it doesn't really lag at all. It only takes just a few seconds to catch up cache that data and start playing. So the YouTube playback is perfect on this tablet, no issues. All right, and what about eBooks and PDF files? Well, let's open up a large PDF file. It hasn't completely finished downloading here. It looks okay on the screen. The sharpness is average. Definitely the iPlay 30 screen is much better for eBooks. I feel having tested both of these tablets now. Now the performance of it, it's nothing amazing, but it's gonna be good enough. Okay, for your ebooks, your typical pace you would go at is not going to compete or beat an iPad, of course. They are the fastest at reading PDF files, even really large PDF files. So double tapping here, that's going to zoom in. And of course, you can use this in your portrait and landscape modes as well. So I just put that in portrait now too as well, which is quite good. And you do have options down here from the toggles. So you can put it into the reading mode and things like that as well if you wanted to. Okay, the blue light filter, eye comfort, they call it and that really does help out so you don't get as agitated or you're not feeling that fatigue there for reading ebooks for a super long time. So for the PDF files, they're great. Let's have a look at an ebook. 
So this one, again, loads in uh, relatively quick there. That wasn't too bad at all. And the text looks good. It's good for this. But if you look really, really close at the text, you will notice the individual pixels on this particular screen here. It's just not the most highest quality that I've seen on a tablet. Definitely not the screen. Is is the big letdown of this tablet, of course. So gaming performance here with the Unisoc chip that it does have, the eight cores, it is pretty good. I'll see if I can just get a kill right now. Got lucky there. And the frame rate seems to be quite steady. I have it on the lowest settings and the highest frame rate option. And that does make the game smooth and playable. You get the occasional little frame dip. Now it's barely heating up. I have been playing now for an, over an hour. This is like my third game here of Call of Duty. And it just feels slightly warm to the touch. So the thermals are not going to be an issue when gaming for long extended periods uh, with the M40 here. All right, guys, so to quickly recap here, I think this is a very average tablet at best. I know it does sell for a really good price, which makes it an attractive tablet. But you need to look at the whole market out there. You look at the competition. There is the, of course, iPlay 30 that I have reviewed in the channel as well. It has a screen that is three times brighter. It's fully laminated and it even has slightly better touch response. It just looks sharper, just better colors. Overall, in general, the screen is a huge disappointment on this. We're talking about a tablet here. A tablet must have a good screen and manufacturers need to put the best screens forward that they can and all do cube is. So tech last, you really do need to step up your game on that because this screen is just not really there. Good to hear the speakers are nice and loud. That is great. We're running Android 10. We have a bloat-free ROM, which is another positive there. Very good. And what is on offer here? We've got FM radio, dual SIM support, GPS. It's a lot. You can place voice calls. A lot on offer for the price tag, but it just simply doesn't, for me, better the competition. I know if you look at synthetic benchmarks, and Tutu looks quicker. But really, they feel about the same, the iPlay 30 and this Techlast M40 here. The internal storage, another gray area, a very cheap drive they've gone with. So that eMMC drive is slow, as I showed you. Very poor sequential reads and writes. It's not really going to hold the tablet up too much, but installation, installing your apps and loading apps will be a bit slower. And I've noticed this are slower than the competition, so that's another one as well. So there we go, now you know the full story of the Techlast M40 here. An Android 10 tablet that could have been better if they'd just gone with a better screen. So I do hope to see you back next year, 2021, with more up and coming tablet reviews. If you did like my review here, please do give a thumbs up and why not subscribe for more up and coming reviews from me. Bye for now.